everybody, and welcome. This is Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. Today, Andrew and I are posing, and we will take our own stab at answering the question, can an MMA school be traditional? I expect some strong opinions from well, people, you know, including you, ourselves, you say on that, this subject. You say that, but we did an episode on, <laughs> is MMA ruining martial arts? I did. Traditional. And we didn't even get... And got, then we did an episode on what has... Uh, MMA brought to traditional martial arts yeah. is good. Like, and like we all, we're, we, whenever we talk about MMA, we say, well, this might be controversial, it might get some feedback. And we is it because we're fair and balanced in our conversations? <sighs> I'm afraid to say probably. Yes. Yeah. So stick around. That's what we're going to do. Maybe yeah. just to be different, I'll not be that. You're just going to be a jerk? Yeah. Oh, this will be fun. I look forward to this. Look, time to put my hood up. I'll just keep interrupting you. Time to put my hood up. All right. If you're new to the show, you should probably check out whistlekick.com at some point. That's where you're going to find all the things we do and why we do it. Generally, we do the things we do to connect, educate, and entertain traditional martial artists throughout the world, no matter what you train, how long you've been training, why you train, etc. Because we generally believe that martial arts makes people better, and more people doing martial arts will make the world better. One of the things that you're going to find at whistlekick.com through all the the mix of all that stuff I just talked about is our store. Yes, we sell stuff. Why? Because we make some cool stuff. People like it and it helps cover the bills because even though we don't have a big glorious set here behind us, there are still a lot of expenses that go into the show and just running a business. If you own a business, you understand. Other things that you might want to consider, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com, where we put up every single episode we have ever done. They're all available for free. But at the website, you also get show notes, like links and photos and videos and transcripts, all kinds of good stuff like that. Are you thinking, hey, you know, I remember this episode back, and they did this thing, and they were talking about such and such? Yeah, that's what the transcripts are for. Not so you can yeah. go and just read them. They're there so you can go back and refer and find what we talked about when. And search and search for things. I've, I had and a couple. Search of, for things. Somebody brought up a question. Actually, take my head Actually, you know what? Me out. Jeremy, you sent me a thing. We should do an episode on this thing. <laughs> and I was like, I thought you had done an episode. So Let me go to the website and I searched using the search feature, which will go through and, and look through that those transcripts. And I'm like, Jeremy, we already did an episode on that. It was episode blah blah blah. We've done so many, but that search feature is there. It really, can, if you're looking for a topic, use it. Jeremy, have you ever had so and so on the show? Well, let, let, me let me look. look. Let me check. I've got that. I don't always remember. Seven hundred episodes ish. Yeah, we're getting by, there. By the time this comes out, yeah, this yeah. will be six hundred and ninety something. Yeah. So bear with us. If you want the whole list of all the things you can do to connect with what we do and support what we do, whistlekick.com/family. We even post some bonus nowhere else content there just to make it worth your while we update it weekly so you can check that out all right i think we're about to completely derail so instead of finding more intro related things we should jump uh, in yeah probably <laughs> let's jump in let's, let's jump, jump into a full guard four feet. Did, you, did you say jump into a full guard yeah that's a great it's a great transition thanks i'm glad i ruined it it's that was really right. nice <laughs> all right can an MMA school be traditional? traditional? You know, we we often, we tout ourselves, uh, rightly so, because we did come up with this moniker that we are the number one ranked traditional martial arts podcast in the world. We are a traditional martial arts podcast. Why don't we, we say... We are prolific, yep. and there are people who think highly of us, and they and there are our third parties that have labeled us that as mm -hmm. yeah. in their rankings. Exactly. Which we are very appreciative of. Absolutely. But we do not tout ourselves as being the number one martial arts podcast in the world. We always underscore the traditional part. Yep. We do. Always. Even even though some of those, like we were talking about one of these rankings, they don't make that distinction. Yep. And mm -hmm. they're they throw us in there with MMA mm -hmm. podcasts and they still put us at the top, which yep. is cool. But we do not pretend for a moment that our conversation encompasses mixed martial arts. Mm -hmm. Although because it sometimes does. Like it, it does, it, but it doesn't encompass, That's right? It's fact. not it's not our goal. It, it, no, no. And, and I think that we make that distinction. Um, well, I make that distinction because I am not an MMA practitioner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not our battle. I am not an expert in MMA. Mm -hmm. uh, 
and thus, as the founder of the company, the things that spidered off from what we do have brought in people who are also traditional martial arts. Mm-hmm. Though not an expert in anything. No, I don't, I, don't, <laughs> I don't even like that term. I had to send an email, a message the other day that said expert, and I was like, hold on, let me explain. I spent way too long in the email explaining <laughs> why I'm using this term. I'm like, I hate this term, but here's why it's relevant. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, anyway, so um, since we consider ourselves a traditional martial arts podcast, I think before we can discuss whether it is. There comes the definitions. I know. We, have, it, we uh, have to do it. Have, there we has have to, to do be it. some starting Because point. otherwise, people argue definitions, and I hate arguing definitions. And, and we're not saying that our definition needs to be the right no, definition. Your definition may be different. And, and thus, that may lead you to a different conclusion. But Correct. in order for us to, to answer a question, mm-hmm. is can an MMA school be traditional? We have to agree. I, I think we're all on the same page in what a school is. But we have to have some semblance of definition of MMA and school. I'm sorry. Okay. And traditional. traditional. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. I think both of those, if, you were, if you've been a longtime listener, you know roughly where we land on those things. I think traditional... Um, it's going to be a little bit more difficult of a term. It's a broader term. Because, sure. because the dictionary definition and the way that we are using it, I think, are actually kind of different. So let's do MMA first. Okay. Uh, for me, MMA is a simultaneous pursuit of multiple martial arts disciplines with the goal of becoming a better combat oriented practitioner. Yeah. I think that that word you added that you emphasized combat is important. I, I think it's important. Yeah. Um, there are many people who train in multiple martial arts mm-hmm. and by the definition could say, and we, we talked about this before, like they are a mixed martial artist because they are mixing up different martial arts at the same time, but their goal is not to, put it into application and actually come combat other people. I have trained in multiple martial arts disciplines at the same time. I would never call myself a mixed martial arts. Yeah. That term has grown to be something else. If we were having this conversation in like 1990, Mm -hmm. it would have had a different context, but words have meaning Mm -hmm. and that meaning oftentimes comes from cultural input well and those words have changed the yes. meaning of those words have changed as Absolutely. a perfect example how many people have tupperware in their house that isn't actually tupperware kleenex kleenex is another example like those were those are brand names yes and there are others and so so mma has this mixed martial arts some people can say it's learning different things at the same time but the but colloquially if if you today, ask 100 means, people on the street it, it means fighting like in the UFC if you ask people 100 people on the street about MMA yeah anybody who's who doesn't train in either MMA or traditional martial arts is likely to have a pretty similar definition and i think we all know that yeah yeah and so that that's what we're talking about absolutely okay so that one's done traditionally mm. this one's harder uh, it because is. it's a bit vague. We, if we take the term tradition broadly, it has to do with doing things the way they used to be done. Correct. Yeah, things that were done in the past. Now, when we think about that in terms of martial arts, we've had people on the show, and in the early days, m- my instinct was to go to uh, a certain time. You know, if a martial art was created X number of years ago. You know, it, it fit. And then I started to realize, okay, so what about somebody who was, you know, grew up with something that was accepted as traditional but made some modifications? Mm-hmm. Is that no longer traditional because it's a little different? How different does it have to be? And to me, a traditional martial art became, uh, interestingly enough, similar to the Supreme Court's definition of obscene. I know it when I say it. Oh, interesting. Okay. It becomes, for me, really hard to say this is and this is not mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. in a clear way. But if I look at it and say, that's a traditional martial art. That's not a traditional martial art. Mm. Where I think this becomes easiest for me to define is martial arts, which a lot of people term 
firearms usage mm -hmm. as a martial art, especially if you're talking about drill teams. Yep. Right? right. Like a military drill team. Mm -hmm. And, and um, it's funny I mentioned that because in our last conversation, our last episode, I don't know if the order of these are going to air, but the last one we recorded was on demonstration teams. Yep. And, you know, we, most of us have probably seen a military drill team and ch -ch -ch, they move the rifle around. And, it's, it's and we, did a, we did an episode on are they martial, you know, is that martial art? Right. I say, I will say, sure, maybe. But even in the cases where I'm going to say yes, I'm not going to call it a traditional martial art hmm. because the roots of what it is. Oh, but Jeremy, the Chinese invented gunpowder like a bajillion and a half years ago. Fine. But to me, when I look at it, that's not what traditional martial arts in my head means. Traditional martial arts is karate and kung fu and taekwondo and Krav Maga. And Aikido and judo. And and yeah. My personal definition, I can see where boxing and greco-roman wrestling get blurry they're out there because it's not just what the movements are it's the way that they are practiced mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so i'm gonna pause and pass the ball to you so for me i think uh, and i spent quite a bit of time thinking about this recently probably more than you because i knew we were going to be recording this and you didn't um it's fun to like throw that stuff at him i don't know i just <laughs> i just show up so for me, so I think it, it all has to do with what the end goal of the training is. Mm. The if why. It, the, it why. To the why. If, if my goal in my training that I'm doing is to specifically get into a fight with someone, consensual or uh, consensual, right? I mean, UFC fights are still consensual. Um, and we both understand that all of MA is not the UFC. Yep, absolutely. Yep. Um, but But those fights are consensual but they and it's not sparring that is very different from sparring mm -hmm. right to me sparring is not i'm trying to knock you out that's not sparring to me that's fighting and if the goal of your training is to fight another person that's not traditional to me mm -hmm. if the goal of your training is something other than that and there are lots of others than that but as long as the end result is not, I want to be better at fighting this person. Now, being able to defend yourself in a fight is not the same. I'm learning my, my traditional martial arts is hopefully helping me be able to defend myself in a fight. That's different from me wanting to go out and get into a fight. It's, I haven't had the time to contemplate this because you just sparked something. Yeah but I'm going to try to express it here. The, the goal for many people, I'd say the, the broad why of traditional martial arts is about not fighting, mm -hmm. ending it soon, growing as a person to not get into it, de-escalation, et cetera. The goal of MMA is about fighting. The goal of traditional MMA is about not fighting. Yeah, that's interesting. Now, not everyone's going to have those same sure. that, that same view, and I don't even know that I fully agree with that. Mm -hmm. But I can rough it out well enough that I think it gives me an interesting dichotomy to move forward from. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is that close for you? It, that's pretty close. Yeah. Yeah. I. I also, for me personally, um, I think there should be, and I, I stress the word should because I don't think schools have to do this, but I think there should be an element of improving and bettering yourself as a person outside of just learning how to punch and kick and, and defend yourself. Um, I'm not saying schools have to do that, but for me, I think that's a big part of it. So if we take, I, I think it's time to move forward. And, and this is where if you take any if you take like that question, right? I have, especially early days, we did an episode, it was like in the first 50. Um, and I think we called it like, where's the martial arts in mixed martial arts? And I caught some flack at that point. And I am I am 100% sure that we lost some listeners at that point mm -hmm. because I had some friends who were practicing MMA and they were supporting the show in the early days. They liked what I said. And then we came out with this episode. And... One of, if I remember correctly, because we're going back years now, one of the common comments was, I have become a better person because of my MMA training. Mm -hmm. 
Yep, I get that. Okay. But I can walk into if you if you put everybody in common clothing, a common space, right? Like the same space, some generic space. And I walked in and you found a way to adjust faces, heights, voices, because let's face it, MMA tends to attract a, a, um, a certain age male population. A certain type of demographic. Right, like yeah. we, can, we can say this objectively. Not that it's only for those folks, but it tends to attract them. Mm -hmm. So if we were to find some way to obfuscate, so I didn't know, and I simply had conversations with people about their training and their reasons for training, I would be able to tell which school I was at. Yep. Okay. Further, I would contend that even in that same scenario, I would be able to identify people, identify the school based on the way they interacted with each other. And I don't just mean like, you know, honorifics of rank and things. Well, so let me put a finer point on it. The MMA schools that I have been to, which is not many, Mm -hmm. admittedly, especially con compared to the traditional martial arts schools I've been to, which is a large number. The MMA schools I have been to, I don't see as high a percentage of people becoming better versions of themselves. They may become better fighters. They may become stronger, faster, better practitioners mm -hmm. of their art. I don't see the personal development side happening. I mean, like I could see them becoming more confident with themselves, but mm -hmm. sometimes, that, sometimes that's a bad thing. Depending on that the is individual. not always a good. Thing. Well, confidence is always a good thing, but it it could exacerbate other other issues, other qualities. Yeah, yeah. That, of, that's of a one's personality. Yeah. I believe that in a traditional setting, broadly across you know ages, populations, if if you take a random sampling of let's say a hundred people engaged in a karate school, taekwondo school, kung fu school, capoeira, you know, whatever, martial arts that are clearly on, on well into the traditional definition, mm -hmm. right? And you take a hundred people involved in MMA and you were to follow them for five years of training and come up with some rubric for determining have they progressed personally? Are they better people? By whatever broad societal definition you want. Which would be pretty broad. Right? Yeah. You know, we, we by, by societal definition, we could say, you know, they are kinder. They volunteer. Mm -hmm. They, they um, don't start fights in bars. You know, things like that. I would be shocked if the traditional group did not progress more on that personal development side than the MMA side. Yep, I, I would I would tend to agree with you. Absolutely. Could it happen? Yes, and that's mm -hmm. and and this is where you know I'm not going to talk about a specific school yet. You know we're we're yeah. we're narrowing in, right? We're getting there. We're not talking about a specific school or a specific instructor or a specific art in any way. We're talking about broad General. definitions yep. of MMA traditional, and we're moving towards a conclusion because this is the way my mind works, and and similar, pretty to similar, yeah, right. Um, yeah, I, I think that's a good point. You know, it has to be, and I think I speak for both of us when we are, we are rarely ever going to come down hard and fast on any side, right? Any line can X be Y. I think the answer is always maybe, right? Could it? Sure. But I think understanding where each side is coming from is the starting point and the, and to define, to be able yeah. to slowly bring them to closer together to find out whether it is or isn't possible yep. is important. So if, if we if we are what we have just said is that MMA schools are generally at least generally mm -hmm. yeah not traditional schools. I would agree with that statement. Okay. If it is the traditional elements the the throwback to what was done before mm -hmm. and practiced in a certain way that makes people better versions of themselves 
most MMA schools are at least not as traditional as traditional schools by the definition that we're supplying. I would agree with that. Okay. And, and you can be an MMA practitioner and have a traditional background. There are quite tons of them. Quite a few. Of them. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if I would say most. I don't know that, but at least many. Yeah, I don't. I don't know that I would say most either. But there are certainly, uh, you know, a, a bunch we could all name right now easily, mm -hmm. right? So that can happen. Sure. Um, I don't know that I that I know of many MMA guys that have gone the other way though, that have done UFC type fighting, MMA fights, mm -hmm. and then said, you know what, I want to learn traditional stuff. Maybe maybe it's happened. I'm sure but, it's happened, but but it's not as common. It's I would probably say. a. a, a the direction is probably more so in the yeah. first direction. Yeah, I would agree. You know, it's interesting as we as we unpacked a bit of the last few minutes. Mm -hmm. I think we got to our answer. I think the answer is yes, it can be. It can happen, but I would think it's rare. I would think that because again, if you are training MMA, could you train in a could you train with the expectation of not getting into a an action? Your, the goal being to get into an actual fight. It could. Um, there are not many, and I think the, the schools that do teach it to kids probably would agree that they're not really teaching MMA to kids. They're teaching jujitsu, Brazilian jujitsu perhaps, but they're not teaching them to beat the crap out of each other. There are some schools. There are schools, and actually, um, as, a, as a small tangent, I have read about how common this is, I can't say. My suspicion is not common but I have read about schools that have fights with teenagers. Interesting. Wow. Where, yeah, yeah, which, oh, it doesn't take much understanding of brain development to know why that's a terrible, terrible idea. idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but, but could you train an MMA school that is not specifically training their students to get into an actual fight with someone else? Sure, sure, you could. But I don't know that that's going to be the majority of the case, the time. It's going to be the other way around. Some of the best BJJ training mm -hmm. occurs in MMA schools. Mm -hmm. I I feel BJJ is a traditional martial art. It can be trained in a traditional yep. or not. And BJJ way. is not MMA. It is not. A lot no. of people will will equate those. They're not. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you know because we've had plenty of BJJ practitioners on the show. Yeah. I mean, just a few weeks ago, we had Bernadette on it. Phenomenal BJJ practitioner. And I would undoubtedly term her a traditional martial artist. I would, yeah, Whether I would, or not she would accept that definition, I don't know, but that is how yeah, I see yeah. her. Yeah, I, and I would say as well, like I do not see her as an MMA fighter. Right. So what is the difference between an MMA school that is traditional, that trains in a traditional way? Mm -hmm. Because we're not, we're not conflating the two. We're not saying that there is a style that is traditional MMA. That, that's not what we're saying. We're, we're, we're taking these culturally appropriated definitions mm -hmm. and we're kind of hybridizing something. So what is the, what is the difference between a traditionally training, training because it's active, uh, MMA school versus a non-traditional one? That's a good, yeah, that's a good question. I mean, I think the, it, to me, it just still comes down to what the, what the why is, the end result. Sure. I've got a good example of something I would expect to see at one versus the other. Would it have to do with paying homage to what happened before? No. No. Okay. It has to do with, with paying homage to your training partner. Oh, you're thinking it has to do with, it has to do with the respect. Yep. Now yep. here's where I started to think about some of these things differently. I started attending some amateur MMA fights and this mm -hmm. goes back years mm -hmm. and I saw some people bowing to them. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen that. And people after fights hugging, hugging. Yep. genuinely appreciating the opportunity to test each other's skills mm. and to get better in the ring because of their mutual willingness to put their body on the line yeah to me that is a very traditional mindset yeah i would agree I would, it certainly can happen i have a, a friend who in their 50s decided to get involved in mma uh, and took a couple of amateur fights mm -hmm. as in their 50s. Like that is very rare. Uh, and he was fighting someone else who was also in their 50s. Um, 
and they got in the ring and they had a good scrap. And by the end, they became great friends. Like they're very good friends now. Um, and I would suspect if we went to their gyms, mm -hmm. it would be more common to find that tone of respect yep. instituted across the board. Yeah. And I can't speak to his opponent because I, I don't know him and sure. they talk to him, but my friend that got involved started in a traditional school. So he's used to that mindset of bowing, of respecting your other person. And when the fight was over, uh, I mean, my friend lost, like he got, he got knocked out. Like mm -hmm. we, his side threw the towel in. It wasn't, it was a, you know, TKO. Sure. Um, but he lost. They still became really good friends. And you're right. Some of that would have come from that potentially from that traditional mindset of respecting your opponent. And why, why do I say that it is more likely that he had that tone instituted in the school? Because especially if, if it had to come solely from him, my, and he valued that, my guess is he would not have lasted terribly long in that gym, mm. right? Because it, it's kind of a counter, Yeah, it, it's a counterpoint. I, so we've got to yes. Mm -hmm. I think we've unpacked some of the differences. Is there anything still hanging? I don't think so. I think, can it happen? Yes, I think it would be rare and, uh, and it wouldn't happen often, but it could happen. I'm gonna call it uncommon. I'm not yeah. gonna call it rare. Part of it, part of the reason being that, you know, I haven't stepped foot in the hundreds of mar traditional martial arts school, hundreds of MMA schools that I, I have on the traditional side mm -hmm. over the years. So I don't have as big of a sample set. Yeah. So I'm less confident in my opinion That's on fair. that side. That's one. Two, a generally respectful MMA fighter isn't going to stick out. Mm. They're going to do nice things. You know, yeah, they're going to bow. They're going to, maybe yeah. they don't even bow. Maybe they're just fair to their opponent mm. and they don't cause a stink. It's a lot easier to spot an outlier, someone who is causing a ruckus. Yeah. And the squeaky wheel gets the grease. Yeah. And, and so I, I recognize that there is an inherent, especially a media bias, right? Because where am I backfilling this information from? It's from media. Yeah. And so I'm trying to be aware of that. That makes sense. And if people feel differently, we want, we, as always, we want to hear. Yeah. We want to know what you think. And Do why you have you a think. different definition of traditional or a different definition of MMA? Like, Does it lead you to a different conclusion? Yeah. Um, I'd also really love to hear from anybody who trains at an MMA school mm -hmm. that they feel satisfies my definition. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'd go so far as to say our yeah. definition. Yeah, yeah. We, we were on Pretty the same close, page. Yeah. Because I'd like to visit. Because I'd like, this is a place, you know, anytime I feel like I'm lacking in understanding, I try to, I try to get there. I try to improve. And so this is a place where maybe making some visits as I'm traveling could help me understand better. And I'm certainly open to that. Awesome. Cool. If you want to support us, remember, we've got lots of ways. Use the code podcast15 at whistlekick.com. Maybe the Patreon, patreon.com slash whistlekick. If you want the full list, it's whistlekick.com slash family. Website for the podcast, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. We're on every podcast platform you could imagine, but if you want to watch this show, we're on YouTube. Our handle there, like everywhere, is at whistlekick. If you've got feedback for us, I'm Jeremy at whistlekick.com. Andrew's Andrew at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. We work hard to bring you a lot of good stuff, and if you value it, you know, Lots of ways you can support, share, whatever works for you. Training programs and what else? Anything else? Patreon. Patreon. Yeah. I like doing these conversations. These it's are good. fun. I, yeah. I like. It makes, me, it makes us think, right? Yeah. And I, I enjoy thinking. It and that's our goal. Hopefully it makes you think as well, you know, out there listening and watching. We want to know what you think about the thinking that we thought. And on that note. <laughs> Until next time. <laughs> Train hard, smile, and have a great day. day.